Uh, now we start for another session. So uh, this is a session this is a picture shows the uh, emerging technology and the behavior with your So I was first speaker there. So are you ready? Yeah. So sure to go. Afternoon, everyone. I hope you've had a cup of tea. It's that time of the afternoon where you know everything starts to wind down. So question that we have today is what do we need to consider when we're designing learning to help people develop their soft skills? A bit of a mouthful. So in this presentation, what I'm going to do is cover hard skills versus soft skills. So we'll start with actually defining the terms. We'll look at the tech changes that have made possible uh, various things that weren't possible um, five years ago even. And we'll look at three points that we've, that we've seen from um, one of our projects um, as the key thing to consider when uh, you're looking at designing soft skills. So hard skills versus soft skills. I'm told that if I want to start a brawl at a learning design conference, this is the question I should be asking. <laughs> What is the difference between hard skills and soft skills? And the reason for that is, you'll see, we'll explore when we go into definitions. But apparently, learning designers can't quite agree on what is the, the key differentiators between the two. And so, before I go into the brawl, I wanted to make a little bit of an introduction about um, the organization that I'm with, which is UFI VocTech Trust. We are a grant funder in technology for vocational skills. And we're focused around skills that will actually help people get, make the most of their working lives. And, um, and so we funded all kinds of things from, and a lot of it actually has been around the kinds of things that we're gonna talk about here today. Um, so we funded all kinds of texts from skills for games, VR environments, for nuclear reactors. So quite a wide range. And one of the things that we're doing at the moment is we're currently funding an award uh, and I need to read it out because I can't remember the name of the award off the top of my head. So it's an award for, future skills and it's really for bright ideas so if any of you are interested or you have a clever idea you don't actually need to have a plan for it yet but if you have a bright idea please do go to our website and apply for the award so ah that should actually give you some more information about the award there's a cash prize the deadline is the 26th of september so you have a, still a little bit of time to apply so going back to our brawl of hard skills versus soft skills. I've heard all kinds of things around this. So firstly, is it an arbitrary distinction? Um, yes, maybe. Maybe it is, you know, an arbitrary distinction. Um, and it can be, you know, so, so they say that it, it's, it's a blurry line between hard skills and soft skills. I would argue that that's the case for any two opposites. The lines between the two opposites are quite blurry. Um, some might say that it doesn't matter if it's a hard skill or a soft skill, because actually the learning design principles that underpin learning actually are the same. So the learning design principles that apply for hard skills would similarly apply for soft skills. Now, the fact that we do make a distinction means there are some differences and there are probably things that we need to consider when we think about hard skills that um, we don't need to think about in the same way or we need to think about in a different way when we're considering soft skills. So as we look at the blurry edges, I'm gonna go to an Arab proverb which says that by their opposites, we get to actually know things. So, so what are the opposites? Hard skills often focus around technical abilities. They're often easier to measure. So 
you can either do an addition problem or solve an algebra equation or not. Um, and actually, often it requires a lot of mental rigor around it. Again, these distinctions, to some extent, we are trying to create these distinctions. When we're talking about soft skills, we're actually looking more at working effectively with other people. Um, sometimes it's harder to demonstrate this, and it can also be less binary. So it's not you can do this 100% or you can't. It can be something in between and often very reliant on emotional intelligence. So those are the kind of definitions that I'm going to go with in this case. Now, what are the technical changes um, that uh, I'm referring to here uh, that have changed soft skills? I'm going to play you, uh, hopefully, start with a prayer that it actually works, a short video. Right. Technical failure at a learning technology conference. Right. This is just something to show you some of the tools that we've recently, you know, come across that are actually um, using VR for soft skills training in healthcare, for example. Um, I just wanted to sh show you the kind of the tech that's available, but also the kind of um, interactions that they have with their users. So I won't play the whole thing. But you can see from the from the interfaces that you came across that it actually lets people interact with their environment. So, going back, going back to learning design then. So if you have this sort of VR environment where people can interact with the environment, um, what, what does it allow us to do for soft skills? So I'm gonna talk about three, three key points. Number one is, what I'm going to call the bouncy castle. So in a bouncy castle, you actually get to jump around, you're completely safe. Uh, whatever you do, it's unlikely to cause any serious damage. And that's actually what something like this, the, the VR tool that you just saw, it's called body swaps. Um, that's what it allows. It allows it to be a bouncy castle where people can actually interact it's completely safe there's no embarrassment you know it's only your vr um uh your vr the 3d vr people who you might uh, you know never meet so you don't actually have to worry about um uh, you know losing faith to them so it's really a say it allows for this bouncy castle it allows for experimentation it allows um it allows for non-linear learning. Now, for anybody who has learned to do anything, you'll see that there's some learning that has to happen sequentially. So you can't get to algebra before you can add up correctly. There's a se sequence that has to be followed, whereas actually what this VR environment and specifically for soft skills allows you to do is actually create non-linear pathways um, to learn soft skills. So if you were uh, learning to negotiate, there's various things that you need to learn as part of that. And some of it could be just being able to ask questions. Um, the other parts of it would be to actually respond to some things. And it actually allows you to develop things in terms of the learning design of the soft skills quite differently because you have this bouncy castle. Now, I know a lot of people don't like the idea that VR is fun and and VR can also not be fun because you know we've also had um people using VR and actually getting seasick from using VR so so the fun is there but it can also be uh you know queasy like like the bouncy castle so um so it's just something to bear in mind actually as you're designing uh the people will have different reactions uh but actually uh, there is a lot of freedom within this um, 
within this particular learning technology. Now, the other piece of this, I think is really important, is around feedback. This sort of learning technology for soft skills actually allows this kind of slightly creepy thing, which is a faceless feedback. So you're getting feedback, but it's not from a person. So the VR is telling you you're good or not good or something else. Um, so it means also a lot of the times there's no one really to disappoint or, or impress. And actually that psychologically um, it isn't, it has its own baggage, you know, because part of what happens with learning is you get validated by a teacher or a tutor. Somebody says, thumbs up, you're good at this. Now, in this VR uh, environment, the fact that it is faceless is helpful because you're completely safe. You don't have to worry about losing face. But equally, there is no one to impress, no one to disappoint. And how do you get to that point where you celebrate success for somebody? Yes, you can have a big whizzy prize, or we've seen people do badging as part of this sort of process. Uh, but actually, there is something very human, and specifically, it's very uh, important for soft skills that you get validated by a person. So, as people are designing these sort of um, uh, in terms of learning design, there needs to be a point at which there is a validation from another human. You know, uh, talk about having to add a human to, to uh, learning technology. Um, so on the third piece, so, so you know, there is the, the final bit, <laughs> and this again goes back to this human point. Um, is around wraparound support. And I know, I don't know if you've heard about this a lot in other, other uh, learning techno specific technologies, but actually around these sort of soft skills, one of the things that body swaps has found is actually the technology is there. A lot of the times it's very plug and play. They've designed it so that you can get the kit, get started, but actually it needs handholding and support around getting people to use it and feel, um, and, and the needs tend to be different depending on the environment that you're designing for and the context that you're designing for. So, so again, this, so it's really important. They have had to think about how do they help their customers create the appropriate support to allow them to actually make the most of the technology. So it's just something to bear in mind that that is actually a necessary part of the learning design. The wraparound support is not just designing in the technology itself, but designing what is around the technology to make sure that people are making the most of it. And finally, just wanted to show you body swaps, soft skills library. So you'll see the kind of things people are using it for. Um, so they have things like public speaking and presentation around communication, active listening. Um, and some of this, I, I mean, this, this is one of the, one of the uh, products that have been, they, they basically had a project with UF5 Octet Trust and they're a product on their own now uh, as well. But one of the things that's really interesting is seeing who is taking an active interest in this and how important actually some of these skills are becoming uh, when it comes to the future of work. So uh, yes, the hard skills are necessary, but so uh, the, as a lot of things are getting uh, automated and all of that, the soft skills are actually becoming more important, not less. Uh, so I imagine a lot of learning designers will be focused around that uh, in the future if they're not, if, it, if it's less of a focus now. So finally, um, the soft skills, um, it's really uh, in terms of keeping in mind where it sits, I think they ha it has a, so a strong impact on the culture and the mindsets of people, uh, of leadership and how they behave. And in a way, it's actually teaching um, people how to, uh, you know, listen appropriately with empathy, lead their teens, uh, negotiate. There's various things that are actually part of soft skills that are becoming more important, not less. 
And I think there's a role for technology where it actually makes some parts of learning soft skills easier, but the point is to actually make us more human. And so it's just something that I think learning designers really have to bear in mind as they design um, technology that is designed to make us more human, not less. Um, so again, just the three points again, a safe, bouncy castle. Uh, how, do you, how do you make faceless feedback meaningful and validating? and the wraparound support of a bear hug. So that's it from me. Thank you.